and welcome back. So last time I put together uh, the start of a bookcase sample. The side and the top which is overlapped on the side and also on the front. And I did that with a stopped tapered half dovetailed housing. Uh, and that's quite a mouthful but if you go back to part one of the series you'll see how I did that. That's a great joint for the top of a bookcase. You can also use it for the bottom of a bookcase as well and perhaps put some bun feet underneath or maybe put it all on a plinth. Well today we're going to look at a couple more things. Uh, I didn't say last time but um, something that cropped up in between is I thought about the back. I can see on the back here we've got the side flush with the top and we would probably want to put a back in there. We don't want to overlay the back because that just looks terrible. So we'd like to inset that. And what I'm going to do is put a rebate down the side and a rebate along the back of the top. Uh, but that doesn't want to come all the way through because we'll see it on the end of the top. So we'll have to do a stop rebate along there. On the side, because that ends in the joint, we can do a through rebate all the way along. So that's the first thing we'll do. Second thing we'll do is we shall consider the middle shelf. Now on something this short, uh, it's not really a problem, this side's not going to flex at all. But if you had a bookcase that was a couple of foot tall, so 600 millimetres tall, then you get into the realms of perhaps that side's going to flex out if you put a lot of weight on the bookcase and on the top few shelves of the bookcase. It could do this. Uh, we don't want it to do that, we want the sides to be held together, so we'll put a middle shelf in which is housed and dovetailed in there so that um, it holds the two sides together. So what we're going to do there is do a dovetailed housing uh, which is um, a full dovetail. It's also going to be tapered so it's easy to get in from the back. So let's get cracking and we'll do the back first. So what we're going to do is rebate the back and we can come perhaps about two thirds of the way across the side actually, give us plenty of room to nail the back on and two thirds of the way up the top. Uh, you can take that for your own measurements, enough space to be able to nail it nicely. It may only be halfway across, maybe even less. So what I'm going to do is set up a marking gaze to mark a line down there which will give us the edge of the rebate and the same along the top and this one is going to be stopped so let's mark in where that wants to stop roughly about so and make sure we don't go any further than there. Now of course I didn't glue this last time which is just as well so we can take it apart so the rebate on the top wants to come along here up to that stop mark. So I'll set my gauge. And then on the bookcase side I'll also take the marking gauge and do the depth for the back. I want to recess it just slightly more than the, the thickness of the back. I'll mark that on the inside of the side. And the inside of the top. I'm going to be using a number 78 rebate plane to do the rebates. So I want to look at the direction that the grain goes to make sure they come out nice and clean. So this is the inside of the side. So that's where the rebate is going to be. And you might be able to see the grain is doing this. So I want to be planing it in that direction. So I'll plane down from the edge along in that direction. 
So I've set the fence on the 78 so that we've got the distance or the width of the rebate across there. I just need to set the iron for a reasonable cut. We'll start near the end of the board. And just check the shaving. That's reasonably thick, so that'll be fast enough and it won't produce too much in the way of tear out and damage. So we get down to depth and it'll look nice. Now talking about depth, we can set the depth on the plane or we can just watch until we get to where we want to go. So we can start to work our way back when we take the next few cuts. There we go. And that's super. Now on the top, we don't want that rebate to go all the way through. We've got to stop for it. And in fact, let's just make sure we get that in exactly the right place. What's to stop there? Well, you see, if I try and plane that, I've got a problem. As soon as I start planing down, if I don't plane all the way through, then the nose of the plane is going to hit uh, where we've stopped. So, can't do it. Well, with this plane, you can move the iron forwards a little bit. So we get what's equivalent to a bullnose plane. And as long as we've got that little much gap at the end already cut out, uh, we can still use it to do the rebate. So I need to cut out about this much of the rebate with a chisel first of all, chop that out. So I can start the, uh, the ends with a saw. So, and then just work away with a chisel. It's quite awkward because I've got such a short piece it's, and it's quite flexible. It's not that great in the vise. But we can remove that material quite easily. Just keep cutting away until we're down to the lines. If we're working around a knot, it's really rather horrible. So that and the fact that the board's flexing a lot makes it very difficult. So let's do something different. Let's saw the rebate in. Pretty good. Annoyed about that bit, but uh, there you go. So that took longer than expected. That's my fault for using knotty pine. Anyway, we've done that. The back, we've set that in. Uh, we can put the top to one side, 
and now consider the shelves. So this is going to be the shelf, uh, this is going to be the middle shelf or the equivalent of the middle shelf which ties the two sides together. So it's going to be dovetailed, uh, let's line it up with the rebate at the back here and give us an idea of how long that's going to be. So that's the position I want it. Just lightly mark this so I'll know the area I'm dealing with. We're going to want to have it stopped again, so again set back a little bit from the end, about a half inch. That'll be the stop. And now we need to consider the dovetail. Um, because it's a long one again, I'm going to have it tapered. So these two lines uh, define where the shelf's going to be. I'll just mark those around the corner. Square those across the rebate. Now we'll scribe the depth in between those two lines, which is, if you can see that, across there. Then using the dovetail marking gauge, we can lay our tail in, so it's all within that area. We can actually go from that corner like that. Same over here. It's a lot easier to do when you're not holding it up for the camera. I think you can see the slopes on the side of the dovetail and just transfer the one point which is going to be the top square across this face and the other one we're going to taper so it's much easier to to put the shelf in. So let's copy that to the front. Throw that down there. In fact, we need that knifed, so let's knife that line in up to the <coughs> where the stop's going to be. Then this other one, we want to taper it, so I just square the line with a pencil to the other end. And then take off, let's say about three, three mil. And we'll connect those up. To that point there. That's where it's going to be, and let's knife that in as well. You've got the, the stop line there. So this is the material we need to remove and obviously we need to slope both sides out according to the slopes we've got on the end there. Now I'll just set the shelf on there and transfer the stop line so they need to be lined up at the rebate at the back. Transfer that mark up there. Square that. And then I want to mark how far that is off that line, which I said was four. So four mil off the bottom. Is there. The other one is one mil off from that side. 
So I'm going to tackle the socket first and uh, well the best way to do that is to clamp it to the bench and uh, chop out a couple of inches at this end, the stopped end, so that I can saw both the sides. Pretty much there. This is the line we're cutting on. So pop the chisel in there, slide up the angle gauge. You can hear the tone of the chisel change when it gets to the bottom of the socket. So I'll just put a knife wall in for cutting the sides. We'll take out the, the housing about so far and for the last couple of inches we'll do the tapered dovetail. So housing and then the tapered dovetail slot. See there I've chopped down to the right depth, do the same on the other side, continue all the way along and then we can remove the central amount of waste. So it's housed for this section and then tapered dovetailed for that section. Hope you enjoyed it. Cheerio.